I'm in the process of testing out these uh, Chatterbox mesh uh, texting devices and getting pretty good range on them and getting to the point where I need to test the mesh capabilities. So I have been testing them by turning devices off and on, and, and it, but now that that's not that real world realistic and uh, I need to spread them out a little bit. So I had intended on doing a lot of the mesh testing this week, but then it occurred to me a, a lot of the that cycle would be pretty slow to spread all these things out in different um, permutations and see what works and doesn't and then tweak them and retry it. So I, I thought I would save quite a bit of time if I make uh, do it in a simulation instead, at least up front. Of course I have to do the real world testing, but uh, I could probably tune it quite a bit using a simulation and and also if I have it in a simulation I can use uh, uh, AI algorithms to do tuning or, or basically uh, any optimization tool I could use to, to tune this thing so to give you an idea this is what a visualization of a simulation this the when you put it in visual form it has to run a lot slower. Um, I, I can actually simulate about four hours in a few seconds uh, and repeat that over and over, which is going to be what helps me tune it automatically before I ever put any devices out outside. Um, uh, I, I've built this simulator which will randomly distribute a random number of simulated chatterbox devices uh, in random formations some of them move you know as if someone's carrying around in their pocket or, or in their car some of them stay still uh, they have different ranges in the the visualization here the smaller circles have a smaller range the larger circles have a large range and once I start this you'll kind of see about 10% of them will move around and the amount that they frequency that they move is also randomly generated so I'm gonna go ahead and start this and I'm gonna speed it up what what it's doing is each step is one second and the dots will change color as they start having uh, traffic go through them the traffic at this point is just pings. Um, okay, now it's started generating some messages. So at first when these devices come on, they have no awareness of any other devices. But as the pings start and as messages start flowing and some of the devices start moving, they'll be propagating knowledge of where, not where, but wh which devices have good connections to which, which which will help it figure out how to get messages to different places. So on the uh, chart here, uh, the mesh cache size, this is how many packets the, the, uh, each device on average is having to hold in its cache. Um, the TPS, that's the av an average of how many uh, messages, I can't remember if it's messages or packets, I think it's messages, how, and pings, yeah, messages and pings, how many messages and pings on average for in every second are each, are flowing through each uh, device, so that um, that just kind of gives you a level of what what the traffic level it's trying to push. Uh, and yeah, that was this blue-green line. That's the transactions per second. Uh, the blue is the known connections. So an average of each device, um, how many of the these connections is it aware of? 
bytes. You know, if I have 10 devices on here, there's 10 times 10 possible connections, 100. So, uh, how does it know, how, what percentage of that does it have knowledge of? Uh, and the knowledge is not necessarily, uh, it, it can be stale, but um, how is that knowledge propagating? So you want this to get up to 100%. Once it gets up to 100%, that means every device on here is aware of every other device and has an idea of how it might route a message. The uh, success rate uh, is uh, across the whole cluster what percentage of messages are making it to their destination. So at first it's not that great, uh, so we're 1300 seconds in. Um, but over time, it will get better uh, because of, again, knowledge of the structure of the network. If this guy here wants to get a message to this guy here, he may know, well, if I get it to that thing, it usually passes by that uh, pretty soon. Or maybe there's a static, you know, some fixed devices that have good connections. So you can see, and here's what I want to see. The devices with a bigger reach, I would like to see those more red because it means things more traffic is routing through them. And the smaller fixed devices, I would like them to, you know, gray is okay. Basically, they, may, they can generate traffic, but no one should be trying to route messages through them. The ones that move around are probably a good candidate for routing messages through. So, the uh, success rate is a little over 50%. The knowledge is still growing. It's not quite at... So, the, the brighter... So, as a device gets... You see the, dark, the difference between the pale red and the dark red. Bright red. Um, means this guy has knowledge of more than three quarters of the area and that's probably because it moves around but again as it moves around it's also spreading that knowledge to the to the other devices so they should catch up there's this one's got uh, oh that one moves too so that makes sense and, and also as the knowledge uh, of the structure of the cluster goes up the delivery success rate will go up and actually the amount of packets that get held in the mesh cache will probably drop because again if if this guy out here has good knowledge of most of this uh, cluster it will have a good idea of where should it send a packet to and it won't be wasting time sending it to s slower paths so uh, um, I'm tuning this thing, this isn't tuning it, this is just uh, to help me see how the current settings work. And I'm going to be using a uh, uh, genetic algorithm that will tune the settings for me. Um, by, you know, I'm going to let it run overnight, maybe for a few days, but it's going to just over and over be generating random cluster configurations and this simulation here is ranges from uh, 5 miles by 5 miles to uh, I think I have it going up to 30 miles by 30 miles just for purposes of this test um, and, and how well that matches up to real world uh, with noise and things like that um, we'll, time, we'll see but I thought it was a good idea to tune as much as I can with the simulation first which is what I'm doing. So, yeah, it looks like just what I want to see. The success rate's still on the rise, and along with the knowledge. Just propagating knowledge on these limited bandwidth devices that are moving, <laughs> and some of them fixed, is very tricky. Uh, so, so I think I've got that tuned pretty well, that part of it. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to 
show show how I'm tuning this thing, and uh, hopefully that gives you a good idea.